Hello everyone, my name is Renato Costa, this is Ozzy Law and today I'll be telling you at least one fact about each of Australia's Prime Ministers. You already know about the first Australian Prime Minister because we have a whole video about him. His name was Edmund Barton. You probably remember that Edmund Barton was also known as Toby Tosport because he really enjoyed foods and drinks, etc. But what you probably don't know is that he was one of the three Prime Ministers of Australia who decided to retire at a time of his own choosing. Australia's second Prime Minister was called Alfred Deakin. He was one of the framers of the Constitution who travelled to England to negotiate the passage of the Australian Constitution Act, the Federation Bill. He was Australia's first Attorney General and he held office three times during the first decade of the Australian Federation. At the age of 37, John Watson became Australia's youngest Prime Minister to this day. And equally impressive, he was the world's first Labour government. When Watson's request for a dissolution of Parliament was denied, he was forced to resign and Sir George Houston Reid became the Prime Minister. Reid was Australia's only free trade Prime Minister. And very interestingly, Reid was the only politician to serve in all three parliaments. The Colonial Parliament, the Commonwealth of Australia Parliament, and later down his life in the British House of Commons. Australia's fifth Prime Minister was Andrew Fisher. He was Prime Minister for three times in six years, and it was during his government that the beginning of the building of Canberra started and also when the Commonwealth Bank was created. Sir Joseph Cook was Australia's sixth Prime Minister. It was during his time as Prime Minister that the Australian Parliament had its first double dissolution. William Billy Morris Hughes was the only Prime Minister to have led both the Labour and the Conservative parties and to be expelled from both. His nickname was the Little Digger and he is to this date the longest serving Australian parliamentarian. He served for a total of 51 years and 7 months as a parliamentarian. His funeral in 1952 was one of the largest in Australia's history with more than 100,000 people there. After Billy Morris Hughes died, we had as a Prime Minister Stanley Melbourne Bruce. Can you guess where he was born? Um, yeah, that's right, Melbourne. Stanley Melbourne Bruce was the first Prime Minister to not have served in a colonial parliament and to not have participated in the movement for federation. Prime Minister number 9 was James Henry Scullin. He only served as a Prime Minister for two years and was precisely during the Great Depression. Actually, the Wall Street stock market crashed a week after he started as a Prime Minister. Lucky guy. The next name is of the first and only Tasmanian to ever take the office of Prime Minister in Australia. And he was also the first Prime Minister to win three consecutive elections. His name? Joseph Aloysius Lienz. Unfortunately, he was also the first Prime Minister to die in office. He passed away in 1939. Australia's 11th Prime Minister was Sir O. Christmas Grafton Page. He is responsible for the coalition between the two conservative parties in Australia. Have you heard of him before? If not, that's alright because he was only Prime Minister for 20 days. Straight after Page's caretaker Prime Ministership, it was a turn for R.T. William Faden. He didn't stay long in the position though, because he was substituted when he failed to approve the budget in 1941. But the most interesting thing about him was that he was supposed to be in this airplane that was going to Canberra with other members of the United Australia Party. He decided to go by train instead and the plane crashed and killed three of the United Australia Party's members. Two of them were actually members of the cabinet. This episode is known as the 1940 Canberra Air Disaster. The following Prime Minister was called John Joseph Ambrose Curtin. He came to power during World War II and so he was responsible for conscription and also for bringing back the troops to fight and defend the Pacific during the World War II. Prime Minister Curtin died while in office. Okay, no pressure now because I don't expect you to have heard of this name before because the next one was Australia's shortest serving Prime Minister. His name was Francis Michael Ford. 
He served as prime minister for only seven days. That's right, seven days. On the flip side, Joseph Benedict Chifley was the first Labour prime minister to win two consecutive elections. He focused most of his efforts in reconstructing the economy after World War II, and he's also known for the nationalization of a big company called Qantas. But he was accused of leading Australia into a socialist path. And so, guess who took his place? Okay, I'll give you a tip now, because every time someone asks you about a particular prime minister, and you don't know the name, and you have to guess, just say Menzies. Robert Gordon Menzies. And that's because chances are that you probably get it right because Robert Menzies was the longest serving Australian Prime Minister. He was the Prime Minister for 18 years, 5 months and 10 days. He was the one who declared that Australia was at war in 1939. He was the one who sent Australian troops to fight in Northern Africa and Europe. And he was the one who tried to dissolve the Australian Communist Party. Sir Robert Menzies retired in 1966 at the age of 71. The following Prime Minister has a tragic history. His name was Harold Holt. When he was 57 years old, he became Australia's 17th Prime Minister. But the tragic part was that he died in office. Actually, he disappeared while in office. He was swimming in Portsea, Victoria in December 1967 when he suddenly disappeared. Gone. Never to be seen again. So when that happened, John McEwen was Harold Holt's Deputy Prime Minister and became the caretaker Prime Minister. His tenure, however, was of only 23 days. So Australia's next Prime Minister was called Sir John Gray Gorton. The thing about Gorton was that he was a senator not a member of the House of Representatives. So, that was a first. In 1971, there was a motion of no confidence against him, and although it was a tide, he decided to vote himself up, and he opened the way for the next Prime Minister. So William McMahon became Australia's 20th Prime Minister. I'll be honest with you here, because I couldn't find anything really remarkable about McMahon's. After him, and after 23 years of coalition government, Gough Whitlam won the 1972 federal elections. During his government, he started to implement many social reforms, like free tertiary education, universal health care, and even the end of the death penalty. Although he had the majority in the House of Representatives, he continuously struggled to have the support of the Senate. That became pretty evident in 1974, when he couldn't pass six bills through the Senate, and that forced, according to Section 57 of the Australian Constitution, a double dissolution. Hey, don't worry about Section 57 for now, because I'll later record a video specifically about it. So what you can do is click the subscribe button so that when I upload that video, you'll be notified. In 1975, Whitlam ended up being dismissed by the Governor General of the time, Sir John Kerr. The episode is known as the Australian Constitutional Crisis of 1975. Don't worry, I'll also make a video specifically about that. With the dismissal of Whitlam, however, the opposition leader, Malcolm Fraser, became the caretaker Prime Minister. And in the following elections, Malcolm Fraser won by an overwhelming majority and became the actual Prime Minister of Australia. Fraser lost the elections in 1983 to Bob Hawke. So Robert James Lee Hawke, or Bob Hawke, became Australia's 23rd Prime Minister. And he is the longest serving Labour Prime Minister of Australia from 1983 to 1991. That's right, he won four consecutive federal elections. But the real fun fact about Bob Hawke was that while he was studying in Oxford, he made it to the Guinness World Record by drinking two and a half pints of beer in 12 seconds. It was during his term as Prime Minister that Medicare was established and that Advanced Australia Fair became the Australian hymn. Now Hawke lost his leadership challenge to Paul Keating in 1991. And so Paul Keating became the Prime Minister in December 1991. And one of the things he's famous for is for giving the Redfern speech in 1992 after the decision of the High Court in Marble. We will have a video about Marble number no. 2 because that's a very important decision by the High Court of Australia when the High Court tried to reconcile and recognize land rights to Indigenous Australians. 
Another thing was that, like Hawke before him, Keating also supported and campaigned for the Australian Republic. But in time, John Howard became the Australian Prime Minister. In time, by the way, is something that we can actually associate with him. He was the second person after the Federation, the first being Robert Menzies, to serve as a Prime Minister for more than 10 years. Howard's biggest agenda was in economic reform. He privatized Telstra, he cut down the national deficit, and he also created a GST. A lot of things happened during his government. For example, there was the whole war on terror after 9-11. And that's when he had to send troops to Afghanistan and Iraq. There was also the episode of the MV Tampa, and we have a video about that. The referendum to make Australia a republic in 1999 was also during his term, so a lot happened. But in 2007, Howard Stein was up, and it was time now for Kevin Rudd. Kevin Rudd started his prime ministership in a very unique way, because he was the first one to have been sworn in without any mention of the monarch. Among other things, Kevin Rudd was a Prime Minister who signed the Kyoto Protocol and who also led Parliament to an apology to the Stolen Generations. An interesting fact about Rudd was that his wife was the first wife of a Prime Minister to continue working after her husband became the Prime Minister. Talking about women in his life, his Deputy Prime Minister was called Julia Gillard and she challenged the leadership of Kevin Rudd when he was still in his first term as a Prime Minister. In fact, he did not even vote, and he considered that Gillard should be the next leader of the party. But later on, after Gillard's term, he still managed to come back and become Prime Minister again. But then in the subsequent election, he lost. Now, Julia Gillard was Australia's 27th Prime Minister. She was the first and only woman to ever become Prime Minister in Australia. And before that, she was the first woman to have ever been Deputy Leader and also the leader of a party in Australia. And after becoming Prime Minister, she was also the first unmarried Prime Minister and one of the few to have confessed no religion at all. She left politics after being Prime Minister and she decided not to contest the leadership um, when Kevin Rudd then became Prime Minister again. And after Rudd's second term, it was time now for Tony Abbott to become the next Prime Minister. Abbott is known for being a conservative and a committed Christian, but he's mostly known for his anti-republicanism. He was one of the key figures in the 1999 anti-republic referendum campaign. In 2015, Malcolm Turnbull challenged Abbott's leadership and he won. So Malcolm Turnbull became the Prime Minister in 2015 and look, these are Rudd, Gillard, Rudd, Abbott and Turnbull, all of them in less than five years. Turnbull was a chairman of the Australian Republican movement and joined the parliament in 2004. When he became the prime minister, a Darwin tabloid just said, rich dude becomes prime minister. But tensions within the party led to a challenge of his leadership in 2018 by Peter Dutton. But Dutton lost that challenge. And then, a few weeks later, Scott Morrison won a leadership spill. Australia's 30th Prime Minister was now called Scott Morrison. Morrison is the descendant of a convict who came to Australia in the First Fleet in 1788. He's the first Pentecostal Australian Prime Minister. And after calling elections in 2019, where everyone thought that he was going to lose the majority to the Labour Party led by Bill Shorten, he actually managed to win. But we have just witnessed a new federal election which led to the majority of the Labour in the House of Representatives, meaning that we have a new Prime Minister in Australia. What is the name of Australia's 31st Prime Minister? His name is Anthony Albanese. Albo, as he's called, has been a member of the cabinet for both Rudd's and Gillard's governments. He was born in Sydney and he joined the House of Representatives in 1996. Now we're just expecting to see what Albo will be doing as the Prime Minister of Australia. Well, I hope you liked this video and I hope you learned more about each one of Australia's Prime Minister. Before you go, make sure you have clicked the like button and that you are subscribed to our channel as well. And you also can become a member of our channel by going into the link that is in the QR code right there. Hey, I hope to see you again soon. Until then, ciao.